outcome that that you're that you're after that you're you're trying for, right? So it's kind of like there's not a specific way that we say you have to do this. What we're saying is the way you do it should be effective for the situation you're in. And these are just the components that we've divided it into. Can we agree with you, Jim? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We have the fundamentals for skiing as well, and they come from Alpine and. Uh, in that context, it's a little bit uh, problematic sometimes <laughs> because they always look at the fundamentals from the viewpoint of alpine skiing because all of our ski instructors are alpine ski instructors first and foremost, and then they are usually Thermark ski instructors. So, yeah, Thermark instructors. So it's very difficult to differentiate because, like, we have exactly the same way that. We have the fundamentals, but the fundamentals, they have to be separated from Alpine completely. And we have to, you know, I have to explain. Uh, we, we have to sort of come up with different solutions. So we can, for example, talk about like uh, etching the ski. But etching the ski happens like in very different, uh, the outcome is completely different in Telemark skiing than it's in alpine skiing because the ski doesn't even behave in the same way because the base of balance is separated because you split the legs. So it's very different that way and we try to you know, teach it in Telemark skiing that okay, we talk about the fundamentals but we don't want you to focus on the fundamentals. We want to focus you on man manipulating the balance usually. That's what we try to focus in, in different ways. Uh, and we should be talking more about the move. <coughs> we don't talk about in, talk about it enough, like the movement of the skis, the movement of the body, and how it affects you, what the outcomes are. And I like I like the way you guys put it out. Yeah. I, I just want to share an experience I lived today. I was planned to go with Keith and uh, Greg, uh, Greg, 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 for a video uh, shoot this morning. <coughs> it appears that we're the three of us were there. <laughs> if one was taking the camera, we only are two skiers skiing apart. So, what we decide, I, I just jumped in a uh, CSI Canadian Alpine session uh, with my gear, with my uh, Telemark gear. <coughs> and uh, there was different uh, goals in, in, in the session. The first one was to look at the track of the ski on the snow. I was working with another guy. So, he went first, I went second, and I made 10 Alpine turns. And then I switch. He wasn't aware that I have Telemark here on, on me. I switch Telemark. And at the end, he said, huh? What's happening? So he noticed that I have Telemark. But I asked him, don't care about the equipment. What happens on the snow? And he said, tracks were the same first. And then we went to body movement. I was with another guy who didn't recognize that I have a Telemark equipment with me. And we did the same. Six, seven turns, <laughs> Alpine. And then I switch Telemark once again. Oh. Eh, what's happening? <laughs> so I did, don't care about equipment. Was the body moving about the same? And it was, I would say, 80% the same. But the 20% was, of course, you know, Telemark uh, lead, lead change and all that stuff. So, and he, he gives me a good clue about what's happening on what, what he saw from the ski on the snow. So from my point of view, I would say from Canada point of view, it's about the same body movement, except for the lead change, the same results, same movement outcomes, the same way of teaching, I believe, is the same also in USA, I think. So that, that was a kind of really good input for me to know that I'm doing the same, whether I'm skiing Alpine or Telemark, so it, it, it's almost the same. <coughs> you agree or? I mean, our demo team has to tell more skiers in the mix, so. I can't disagree with you either. Once <laughs> again, <Here. laughs> yes, I do, I do agree. There's there's slight uh, differences, of course, like how do you initiate the turn and so on. But the skilled telemer skier can totally adapt yeah. in that. Uh, the same way goes like vice versa that the alpine skier can adapt to, you know, the radius of uh, telemer skier as well. And of course, like the skis. And they ski their radius in a semi, very same manner. But I, I do s still see that, you know, the way you initiate the turn, the way you exit the turn on Telemark stance, 
uh, at least we have a divide in it that do we rotate the upper body or not. Mm -hmm. uh, we're starting to be more and more in the same page that we actually do like to rotate the body, especially mm -hmm. if we want a certain outcome. So it does affect the radius and the outcome on the ski snow interaction for sure. Yeah. But yeah. And one difference I see from uh, from you uh, guys USA is that you define the lead change as fundamental, which we don't. Huh? Canada doesn't define the lead change as a skill. We neither. Uh, yeah. So so uh, maybe you can get on the jump on this to do, to give more. We, we, in, in the manual at page 64, the second paragraph, we define the lead change, and there's three or four different lead change, going forward, going backwards, scissors, and sequence. So you can just have alpine till the, the fall line, and then going forward with a kind of sequence, but you define that as a fundamental. And I saw that four years ago while I was in, in Bulgaria, and it triggers me to know why they do and why we don't. Should you stop doing so, or we should start doing so? <laughs> so let's start the discussion on this uh, with you, Jim. Absolutely. And uh, any uh, colleagues from USA too, in the, uh, or anyone um, in fact? Eh? I I have to go back to what I said uh, a few minutes ago, in that, and this was very apparent to me, because I was definitely when the fundamentals were put together, I was the one that was sitting there with mm -hmm. those diagrams in my hand and everything else. And, we went all sorts of different directions with this. And that's what I said. Eventually, it, it occurred to me that um, that we can, the way that we break skiing apart is kind of a, it's somewhat arbitrary. You know, we've decided, you could look and say, how do I evaluate skiing? It's like, I want them to ski well. That's my fundamental. You ski good, <laughs> all right? But we've chosen to take that and break it into some parts. And so, I don't know that I agree you should or we shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> In other words, what I'm trying to say is that I think one of the things that came came from these discussions about how to choose that lead change fundamental, you know, because otherwise our fundamentals are almost identical to the Alpine fundamentals with the addition of lead change. Uh, but when you stand at the bottom of a hill and you look up and you see a telemark skier coming down, what's the first thing you notice that causes you to recognize that they're a telemark skier? They put one foot in front not, of the other. Not all of them, but <laughs> most of them. <laughs> well, you recognize that they're a skier. You recognize that they're a telemark skier because of this, because they put one foot in front of the other. Right? And we also believe that the ability to manage the lead change has a very tight connection to the ability to manage the other fundamentals. Right? And so that connection between the lead change and the ability to do other things, like on page 64 of your manual, you have several different kinds of lead changes that go in there. Well, if there was no connection between the lead change and what it did for you resulting in better balance, or I don't know what you define in the manual, but better ability to turn the legs or tip the legs or something, control the pressure, all right, then why would you need four different types of lead changes? It's Any one... To insert that. Which one? This one. Yeah, exactly. And so for us, what I would say is situationally, uh, along with the ability to either turn the ski more, say in softer snow or mobiles versus carving more on hard pack or racing kind of things, that might change where the lead change, how the lead change occurs. Right? And so we believe that it is a fundamental part of what we, we teach in telemarking and a fundamental part of what we evaluate in telemarking. So, that's how we added that to our the original of the five scheme telemark or mm -hmm. alpine mm -hmm. scheme fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Plus, yeah. we also manage our lead change. And I understand that you don't define it as a fundamental. No, because our fundamental fundamentals are from, from alpine, alpine scheme. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I have seen some uh, people trying to do the lead change on alpine equipment, but it, it doesn't work that well. <laughs> 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 I should add one more piece, um, and, and Greg wrote this in some of our, our standards materials about, we wondered the question, would it be possible for somebody to pass a telemark certification exam without making a telemark turn? If they showed up, put on telemark equipment, and did nothing um, but alpine skiing all the way down, and were successful, right, would they pass it as a telemark skier? And 
our answer to that question is no, we don't believe that they should pass. Mm -hmm. We believe that they should be able to de de demonstrate telemark technique, right? We acknowledge the fact that they're a good skier, right? But they should be able to de demonstrate telemark technique in order to be a telemark, certified telemark instructor. Yeah. So we wanted that to be included yeah. in there as a, you know, as a, uh, what do you call it, a, a centerpiece of what we 